Let's drop some lead on those motherfuckers. Modern armament of the Iowa-class battleship. It's truly an amazing thing for a ship in its lifetime to go from weapons like this to this. The Iowa-class battleships have had more upgrades than any other ship to serve in the U.S. Navy. This was a class of ship first ordered in the very start of World War II in 1939. Four out of six were built, with the last two, the Illinois and the Kentucky, having their hulls scrapped before completion. All older U.S. battleships were decommissioned by 1947. But the Iowa-class battleships built kept on fighting until the 1990s. After World War II, Iowa-class battleships provided fire support for UN forces in the Korean War, fought in the Vietnam War, all the way up to Operation Desert Storm in 1991. Rearmed and refitted, all four of these battleships have been home to generations of sailors. They further provided incredible locations as museum ships, for ceremonies, music videos, and many movies. The 1980s would see the most significant refits for all four Iowa-class battleships. When Reagan was sworn in in 1981, he made good on his promise to build up the U.S. Navy in his 600-ship Navy policy, in part to counter the new Kirov-class missile cruisers introduced by the Soviet Union. Reactivating four Iowa-class battleships and modernizing them was a method to not only get four proven ships added to the fleet, but they were seen as a symbol of national pride and strength. Reagan would not flinch in a Soviet arms race. Amir missed me. <laughs> Central to the Iowa-class battleships are the 16-inch guns. Each 2,000-ton turret sits on top of rollers. Their weight helps keep them in place, along with holding down clips, which prevent the turrets from jumping their tracks. Several concepts for removing these massive turrets were proposed in the 1980s, which would free up significant weight and deck space. There were ideas for replacing the turrets with a vertical launch system for missiles, or even a flight deck for marine helicopters, or Harriers was explored. Even a design for a steam catapult and arrestor wires for F-18s was drafted. Ultimately, the modernizations would keep much of the old with the new. Modernizations included overhauling to burn Navy distilled fuel, electronic warfare suites were added, and the close-in weapon system for defense. Four phalanx sea whiz protected the ship from threats, able to track and fire at targets up to 6,000 yards or 5.5 kilometers away, firing up to 4,500 rounds per minute. These guns are highlighted in the movie Under Siege, which used the USS Missouri for filming, and also the USS Alabama as a stand-in. This phalanx is a mock-up. It's still one of the funnest battleship movies ever made. Beyond the Sea Whiz, what really upgraded the battleship's punch were the armored box launchers and shock-hardened Mark 141 quad cell launchers. Missile systems aboard a battleship were carefully selected and installed to withstand the shock of the main gun's firing. These launchers would allow for battleships to carry Tomahawk land attack missiles and Harpoon anti-ship missiles. Tomahawks have a range of around 1,500 miles, or 2,400 kilometers, with the anti-ship Harpoon missiles having a range just under 160 kilometers, or 100 miles. This was a pretty impressive upgrade from the maximum range of the main guns, being 39 kilometers, or 24 miles. The battleship also had the ability to carry a Tomahawk with a nuclear warhead. Bang, you're dead. Fitting Tomahawks onto battleships required significant rebuilding. Anti-aircraft guns needed to be removed, and about 40% of the secondary guns. To compensate, the battleships carried Stinger surface-to-air missiles, with dedicated firing positions to be used by the crew. Other defensive system upgrades include towed torpedo decoys. These systems emit a simulated ship noise, such as that made by a propeller or engine to attract torpedo sensors.
The battleships received the RQ-2 Pioneer drone, used as a spotter for the guns. The New Jersey had already been using drones since the Vietnam War, armed with the Gyrodyne QH-50 Dash. Interestingly, a Pioneer UAV, operated by the Wisconsin, received the surrender of Iraqi troops during combat operations in the Gulf War. Iowa's could be further supported by helicopters, including tandem rotors. Altogether with the upgrade to the communication systems, fire control systems, and radar, modernization cost $1.7 billion, roughly the same as building four modern frigates of the time. No way. Hit it! Over 50 years after their construction, Iowa-class battleships, the Missouri and Wisconsin, last participated in warfare during Operation Desert Storm. This not only included firing 52 Tomahawk missiles, but significant shelling from their main guns. Together, almost 1,100 shells were fired at coastal targets. In theory, these battleships could still be effective to date and into the future. Probably the funnest testing of this theory is in the science fiction movie Battleship. However, the expense of running and maintaining these systems is simply too prohibitive, particularly with the amount of crew required to operate the guns. It's when the guns are firing efficiently, like this, that you can be proud of your crew down below. It takes men with Navy know-how in the turrets to feed those big guns, men who've learned their job through long hours of training and hard work. One film to consider watching that explores the very issue of maintenance on Iowa-class battleships is A Glimpse of Hell from 2001, a low-budget production that explores the 1989 training incident that saw an explosion in the number 2 16-inch gun of the Iowa, likely due to powder being rammed too hard into the gun breech. 47 men died, and the investigation was poorly executed and highly controversial, including accusations of a love affair and suicide. On my mark, three... Today all four ships continue to be celebrated as icons of not just naval culture but American culture. They are well preserved and likely to show up in more productions for decades to come. Sir, are we really firing on the level? Sure looks that way. Holy shit. All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this brief on the modern armament of Iowa-class battleships. Feel free to add anything I missed in the comments section, and I'll see everyone in the next video.